everybody. This is Mandy now. I'm the executive director of Health Professions Week. Welcome to our Thursday evening webinar, um, St. Patty's Day. Um, happy St. Patty's Day to uh, those of you who celebrate. Um, for those of you who are joining us this, uh, this wonderful Thursday evening, I am so excited to um, host our, our partner tonight. It's the Health Collaborative. We have Miss Helena McKinney with us. She is the director, I'm sorry, the manager of healthcare workforce innovation at the Health Collaborative. She is amazing. And I'm just, I'm so excited for you guys to get to hear from her after our panel presentation. Um, for our live audience, um, Helena and I, we will be off camera while the video is playing, but we will be responding to chat questions. So if you have questions and you wanna ask Helena, she's here, um, she'll turn her camera on in a little bit, um, but she's here, she's answering your questions in the chat. So make sure that if you uh, hear something or see something in the video and you wanna know more about that, drop Helena a question in the chat. You can put questions into the question and answer box and we'll moderate those questions after the panel. So kind of real time Time chat questions for after the panel. Um, I, I, let's get started. I'm really excited. Thanks for joining us today, you guys. And I will see you again at the end of the panel. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to Health Board. My name is Rita Graff and I'm with Ohio College Tech Prep Southwest Region. I'm proud to say we are one of the sponsors for today's event. We are thrilled that you are joining us today and not only are we kicking off the, the Health Professionals Week together, we are coming together to share about the importance of health careers and the crucial time in the world where many people are realizing how important healthcare can be. Southwest Tech Prep is honored to be here. We've been involved in this event for several years and we have helped find several of, the, of today's exhibitors. Tech Prep is a state-funded organization supported by the Ohio Department of Education and the Ohio Department of Higher Education. We work with area high school students. We work with businesses and colleges to transition seamlessly into college and to the workforce if you want to go there right after high school. I'd also like to acknowledge the other sponsor for today's event, Life Center Organ Donor Network. Life Center also has a virtual booth today. If you want to learn more about their incredible, important work that they are doing um, and how it's been impact impacting everyone, single, every single person in the world, um, in the healthcare, please stop by their booth today. We also want to thank our panel and exhibitors for showing up virtually today. We have represented representation from all of our major health systems and so many more organizations within our community. We know that everything, with everything going on in the world, you could you could be anywhere that you want to be right now, but you chose to be here with us. So we thank you for the time that you're taking to be here where we are building the next generation of healthcare professionals. Now we have heard from lots of teachers who are watching the event today. Um, both small and large groups of students will be in their classrooms and in libraries. And by our count, we are, there's at least 150 more people watching than what we're gonna actually see on the screen. That's huge. And we want to thank all of you for bringing students to this event. And all of you that, who are students watching, whether you're on at home or you're on your laptop or you're on your phone, we know that this event will be a good experience for you. So let's get started. I'm going to turn it over to Helena McKinney, 
of Health, for, Health Collaborative, who is going to moderate today's panel. Helena, you want to take it away? I will. Thank you so much, Rita. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to Health Force 2021. We're so excited that you're here today, and we appreciate everyone who took the time to spend your Thursday morning with us. You know, there's you know, a million things you could be doing today, so we're glad you're here. Um, I want to thank Rita, who just spoke. Um, we're so grateful to have your support, as well as the support of Life Center, so that we can put this event on for so many organizations and um, schools in our region. So thank you both. Um, as Rita mentioned, I'm with the Health Collaborative. I'm the Senior Manager of Workforce Initiatives, and I have been the one who's put on Health Force emails and um, different things that you might have seen. So you've probably heard my name, but um, now you get to see my face today. Um, we have a lot of is a short event to cover as much as we do. So I want to let you know that we'll be talking fast sometimes, but I promise you that it's going to be fun. We're going to get a ton of content in, and you're going to have an amazing time. So um, if you got here early, you might have seen those slides rotating, one of which was promoting our virtual photo booth. And it's a very cool um, photo booth, and it's if you, you can take a pic on your laptop or on your phone, you can take several, um, you can upload photos. So we encourage you to save that link. And I think they might be showing this um, slide and I'm not sure if I can see it, but um, we encourage you to save that link and just post throughout the event. You're welcome to tag us. And even if you don't, please use the hashtag HealthForce21 and we'll be able to find your post. And we'll make sure to pop that slide up at some point today, again. Um, so we're gonna start the um, event off with a spin the wheel game and whoever wins is going to win a gift card to Amazon. Congratulations, Faith Curtin. Um, thank you so much for um, being a part of Health Force and for checking in today. And um, you will get an email at the email that you registered with for this event that has information on how to access your gift card today. So that'll come this afternoon, so look forward to that. Um, and there's gonna be a lot more chances to win things today. That photo booth I mentioned, we're going to give out a gift card for one of the posts that we find on social media. So if you post um, something from the photo booth on your own platform, we'll, we'll find you there and um, we'll pick one of those at random. We're also going to have another spin the wheel throughout the event, as well as a fun game of bingo at the end. Um, and there's a chance to win um, a gift card for just completing a poll about, or survey about how the event went for you today. And we have one for the teachers as well. So um, there's a lot of opportunities and thank you for that. So I don't wanna keep going on and on about all the other stuff though. I wanna get to the why you're here and that's our healthcare professionals panel. And I'm going to introduce them right now. Very excited about our panel this year. We have three amazing people with us today. I'm gonna to say their names in alphabetical order. Um, and if they want to, and, and then I'll also go ahead and give them a chance to tell you what they do currently, and also a little bit about how they got there. But I'll start by just saying um, who they are. And the first person we have is Mary Bennett, Mar sorry, Mary Barnett. So sorry to say your name wrong. Thank you for being here with us. Good morning. And good morning. <laughs> I feel like I've been like rambling, so I'm excited to have someone on the screen with me. So um, she is with us from Cincinnati State, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what she does. If you want to just go ahead and start now, you can start. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, good morning. I am the Associate Dean and Health and Public Safety and Director of Nursing. We have quite a few different things here going on. We have our state tested nurse aides here. We have the LPNs. We have LPN, RN, and RN, and very soon have RN to BSN. So, you know, it's very exciting to be able to offer pretty much every realm that you could possibly go through for nursing, at least in the undergrad level. And I think we are the only um, college in the area that has every single level. So we are looking forward to having that seamless progression for everybody. 
did you need me to talk about how I got here? Well, anyway, I think something froze, but we're good. We know how technology works here. Um, and I will say, you know, I actually did everything, the steps of nursing, except for the nurse aid. So I really understand everything that you could possibly go through with the different steps that it takes to become a nurse, to become an LPN, to become an RN, to get your bachelor's as well as go through and um, go to grad school to get your master's. And I'm actually currently working on finishing out my doctorate. So it's been wonderful to actually be able to go through all these steps. I'm assuming that I'm next. Uh, my name is Erickson Neymar and I'm the Population Health Specialist at the Health Collaborative um, Justice on Kalina. It's a data-driven nonprofit organization that brings together a lot of health care stakeholders within the greater Cincinnati uh, and the Kentucky region to provide like actual data they need to um, serve, like to make to, for healthier people, better care and lower costs. So I'm like really responsible for like planning, executing and supporting a lot of like the health collaboratives, population health strategy work in alignment with the regional health agenda, which is to make uh, Greater Cincinnati uh, healthy by design. So a lot of my work falls under like four pillars, community-based organization support, population health infrastructure and analytics, community um, advocacy, and internal um, collaborations. In terms, in terms of how I got to this spot, which I am in, um, I took a couple of um, years off of school and recently just graduated with my master's in health services administration at um, the university in May. Um, and I worked for since June of 2020, I worked on as an uh, administrative resident at the Health Collaborative, working on our COVID task force, community health needs assessment, the um, accountable health um, communities um, project and other population health um, strategy work, and became a population health specialist in May of this year. And did Tom, did you already speak? No, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Hi, uh, my, good morning, everyone. My name is Tom Niskalikis. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer at Westchester Hospital, located at Westchester and Liberty Township. Uh, we, are, we are part of UC Health. And uh, the way I always like to, to, to explain what a system is, think of a school district that has a high school and middle schools and a bunch of elementary schools. So that is our system, UC Health. Um, our system composes of UC Medical Center, um, Westchester Hospital, Drake Hospital, and our university physician group, which is about a thousand physicians. And specifically, again, for Westchester Hospital, I am the chief administrative officer, similar to what a president or a CEO does. Awesome. And Tom comes back to us by popular demand. We had a, quite, a lot of requests for him to come back this year, so really excited to have him. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Really excited. Sorry I had a couple issues that allowed me to cut out, but I'm glad that everyone kept going, so um, thank you. And I want to go ahead and get into a few deeper questions, just for, so the audience knows. With the virtual booths that are coming up, you will get to get more into the nitty-gritty about people's everyday jobs and um, what those look like. But we want to also get to know, take advantage of these panelists and find out some even bigger picture things about healthcare and um, as well as what they do on a, a daily basis. So I know all of them have a great background, and um, but all of them also have unique backgrounds where they didn't necessarily start out doing what they're doing now or even knowing that that's what they wanted to do. So I want to start with Mary and see if you can tell us um, what what is it that you believe led you to your career today and what is the most rewarding thing about your job currently? Um, well, for me, I actually started, when I first started school, I actually started out in interior design. So quite a far cry from healthcare, but um, I had a father who was, uh, my stepfather was a dentist and an oral surgeon my mother was a mortician, so it was like, okay, well, what do I want to do when I grow up? Well, I um, talked to my mother, and she was like, why don't you go to nursing school? And I was like, hmm, you know what? I'll try that. So she actually encouraged me, and she was like, you know what? To get you in and encourage you to stay, I'll actually go with you. So when I first started out in nursing, my mother actually went to nursing school with me. So, yeah, that was 
that was a treat. It was actually fun going to nursing school with her. Um, you know, that's how we started out when we did our LPN. And then I went on, I, I worked as a, an LPN for about nine years or so. And then I went on to become um, an RN. I came through Cincinnati State, actually. So, you know, it was wonderful to have that full circle to come back here now and actually be the associate dean and be over the program that I was actually in. I came here to do the LPN to RN program and then went on from the LPN uh, to RN program to the RN to BSN program, which I actually did through University of Cincinnati, did my grad school through since, uh, UC and now doing my um, finishing out my doctorate with NKU. But it was it was very interesting to be able to go through all the different steps that everyone is actually going to go through. So that it's really interesting because with us now, hopefully getting this far into BSN program, I can really help whoever else comes through here. If they want somebody who's experienced what they're getting ready to experience, like, you know, I'm right here to help them through it. So it, it's really been wonderful. I absolutely love it and found that, you know, nursing, after getting into it, nursing is my calling. It's just something you, you really have to love doing to be able to reach out to people and, and help your patients and help their families as well. All right, how about you, Tom? What, what, what led you to where you are today and what do you like about your job? Sure, so I was uh, an undergrad, I went to the University of Cincinnati. I was actually a biology major. And uh, I knew early on I did not wanna be a physician, but I was uh, intrigued about anything and everything relating to sciences and biological sciences and so on. Um, soon after, I realized that uh, laboratory life was not for me, and I, I, I laughed when Marie uh, uh, spoke because I was actually pursuing uh, a career as a mortician. Um, so I showed up and, uh, at Xavier to do my master's program um, to talk about um, me entering mortuary school, and I ended up bumping into the dean of hospital and health administration had a life-changing uh, discussion with him, and he um, was able to explain that I could uh, still be involved from a biological perspective in terms of making an impact on people's life, yet um, and bring in my business um, interest. And to me, that was my shining moment that led me down the path of hospital administration. Awesome. And Eric said, I work with him as a health collaborative, and I get to see a lot of the work that they're doing in his department, um, and we get to see it in the community. So I'm really excited to hear about how you um, ended up where you are today. Um, yeah, it's kind of like similar to like Tom. Like I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and studied biology and chemistry uh, with a pre-med track. So during my gap years between like uh, undergrad and grad school, I became a scribe and just make sure, try to get more exposure to the healthcare scene. And I figured out that that was kind of like not the space for me specifically, but I, I also still wanted to stay within the healthcare realm and like reach a more broader perspective. So um, I talked to one of my friends who was in the same year as me, but uh, I started grad school earlier um, at the at Xavier's on Masters of Health Services Administration off program. And he just told me more so about that, and I was very really intrigued about the different avenues that that or that um, program could help me um, take and stay within healthcare. So, um, upon that, starting the the program, I became an intern at CareStar, which is a home health agency within um, uh, Cincinnati, and it helps to work uh, a lot of individuals to to bring them to give them like home healthcare needs. So what before I graduated in May, I also like I've worked at the health collaborative as I said earlier. And a lot of the things that we tend to do is we aim to connect like clinical and community health. So we work on different projects like um the the accountable like health communities, which is like trying to engage that, that critical gap that you see within like clinical and community health services, provide um and identify health-related social needs through like Medicaid and Medicare beneficiaries to like screening, referrals, community um, uh, navigation services and things like that to help impact like healthcare costs and decrease um, healthcare legalization. So uh, for me, I feel like the best thing is that like I get to do this job. It's not that I got to do this job. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. 
Um, and as while you all were talking, I noticed you were naming a lot of um, different um, universities around the region and, and in the Midwest and, and right here in Greater Cincinnati for those of us who are here. So that's really cool to see that there's a lot of um, places that you can get your education right here and go on to enter healthcare. Um, with a great education, so it's really exciting to hear all of that. And I know some of those places are here today um, for the virtual booth, so um, some of you students will get to meet them later. Um, so I also want to give some insight that students can kind of in their lives now, and that is something you wish you knew earlier in your career or or anything that you would suggest to those watching today that can kind of help them find their path and find their career. So we want to do the same order again and just start with you here. Um, for me, I wish there was something like this, you know, quite a long time ago, so we didn't have all this technology. Um, but I wish there was something like this to kind of help me along when I was in high school to see what do I even remotely want to do. Um, you know, I was in, I took drafting classes and whatnot, so like I said, I knew I loved interior design, I loved to draw, so that wasn't the issue, it was a thing of really, what else could I do? I even worked at a, um, a hazmat facility. You know, I was there as a secretary and it was like, hmm, what do I want to do? And then I actually started writing computer programs back when we had, you know, the DOS system. So, you know, I've had a myriad of things that I've, I've been through, but I wish there was something like this to give me a clue of all the different things that I could really go for and just kind of see what would I like to do. So this platform, I think, is a wonderful platform. I have to thank you guys for this, for our generations coming up. Let's go next. How about Tom? Okay. Um, so healthcare, um, obviously everyone here who has participated has an interest in healthcare. Um, but what I what I share is we typically get enamored with just the more common one uh, common opportunities like physicians or nurses. But just, let me give you an example just for Westchester Hospital, a hospital my size, which is a 200 bed hospital. Uh, we have over 250 different job uh, positions just in our hospital. So um, everyone, as I as I shared, everyone knows what a nurse is and a physician is, but there are different types of therapy positions. There are different types of uh, imaging positions and so on. So there's a lot out there that people don't even know that exist. So um, my my advice to those that are saying I'm interested in healthcare, but I don't really know what's out there, is um, I would look at um, volunteering at an organization, um, either hospital, home health, you know, any any of those organizations and get to know what's out there. Um, the other thing is there's shadowing opportunities that many organizations, healthcare organizations offer. I know Westchester Hospital specifically, we, we have about uh, 350 students that rotate here during a non-COVID year um, where they're able to get exposure to different types of positions. Because as I typically tell folks is, when you invest in your own career, when you go to school, that's a that's not only a big time commitment, but it's a big dollar commitment. And I think what a student needs to do early on is understand what their passion is and then pursue it. And the best way to understand what your passion is, is to um, get out there and expose yourself to other types of op what opportunities exist in healthcare. And again, it doesn't have to be a hospital setting. It can be in a managed care setting. It could, you know, in my in my classroom when I did my master's program, we actually had somebody that um, participated in um, prison healthcare. I didn't even know that existed. So um, there are lots of opportunities out there, and that would be my big advice right now: volunteer shadow. Um, for those of there are some organizations that allow. Um, um, that will offer jobs to 16 and 17 year olds. I know my organization right now, we are probably by the end of the year, we are we will be um, offering positions to under 18 year olds to 16 and 17 year olds. Again, that's another opportunity to uh, get some exposure. Okay, we hope everyone remembers that and take note. Um, Erickson, why don't you go next? 
Yeah, I'll probably share the same sentiment as both Marie and Tom. Um, for me, like definitely like utilizing your counselors and like career resource centers um, and also opportunities like this um, to be able to like gain exposure to different um, health uh, healthcare organizations as well as healthcare, different healthcare settings. Um, um, I know for me, like just growing up in like a um, an African household, like you didn't get a chance to kind of like create your own path and mold yourself. So like being able to do that for yourself and like not follow suit what other people set for yourself will be able to like find what you're most passionate for in. And I will share the same thing, like volunteer, like and try to find if you can be able to find like in like a lot of like internships or like little entry level like positions. Um, look for those things. And for me, like growing up, I think I feel like I didn't really like celebrate those like small wins. And so being able to do that more so like definitely helpful for you like in your career going moving forward. Okay, um, the next question, I'm going to switch into a little bit about what's going on. We know that there's worldwide pandemic. We know that there's, you know, a lot of talk about what's, you know, in with healthcare and if people are excited. And we know that it's not just people that work in healthcare, but lots of jobs have people who are burned out just because of what we've been going through around the world. And I want to ask a couple questions to do with that. The first question, and we can, we can go in order. Um, and circle back is just about do you believe that healthcare is still a rewarding field to go into and would you still recommend it for, to people and also are there certain people that you think um, you would recommend it to more so if, if there's someone that you if you want to just seeing how healthcare works and how what you know how people are doing like a skill set that you think people need to have that would make them great in healthcare maybe you can touch on that as well Do you want to start? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you want to start? No. Order by your name. <laughs> that's okay. Um, well, I will tell you, like, healthcare is still a very rewarding field. Um, it's a thing of, to tell you how rewarding I find it to be, my favorite nurse calls me mom. So I had my son go into nursing. I encouraged him, and he's now actually a travel nurse, and he's in California right now. Don't like that fact, but... You know, it's a thing of, it's, it's been very rewarding to me, and I think it will be very rewarding for him. I'm pleased to say that, you know, like I said, my favorite nurse calls me mom. That's my biggest thing. And it's been awesome to see that there have been so many different things that, and so many different avenues that you can go through in healthcare. It doesn't have to be nursing. Of course, that's my passion, but it doesn't have to be nursing. So, therefore, you know, just as Tom talked about, there's 250 different positions at his hospital alone. Yeah, and that's just at the hospital. That's not talking about all the different avenues that you can go through in healthcare. That's just in one place. So I recommend that anybody who even has an inkling that, you know, you might be interested to, like Erickson said, you know, try some sort of internship if you possibly can. Talk to your counselors, see what is out there and what opportunities you could possibly get because it is very rewarding and I absolutely love it. I'm in education, so therefore, you know, teaching more nurses, I, you know, I absolutely love it. Can't say enough about it. Tom. Okay, so I also agree. Healthcare, I think, is a growing industry. And even before the pandemic, um, there was a there's a huge demand for um, all healthcare individuals. Big portion of this is if you look at generations, uh, my generation is, are known as the baby boomers. Baby baby boomers are now entering retirement age, and and right now the majority of healthcare workers are baby boomers. So we're all we're we're going to have this big gap all of a sudden where you've got a bunch of retirees. You've got an aging population, and you've got no one to take take care of them. So that's that was the situation before COVID. Now you throw COVID in there, where there's higher demand for healthcare, and so there there is an opportunity for everyone. Um, in terms of skill sets and all that, the other the other analogy that I love to use, and I'm again I'm I'm going to take it from a hospital perspective, is when you look at a hospital, we are basically a city by itself. We have um, a business area. We have marketing area. We've got uh, healthcare providers. We've got electricians. We have plumbers. So we're in a city by itself. 
So in terms of skill set, if you, the only thing I would say is if you love being in a, in a field that enjoys helping people, then healthcare is a big potential for you. You don't have to be a hands-on uh, provider. As I said, you can be a, an electrician or a plumber, a biller, a registration clerk, clerk um, that, that can interact with patients. And if you enjoy helping people at a time where they're at um, kind of they're distressed and they're concerned about their well-being and all that, then this field is for you. If you have a compassionate heart, then this is for you. And again, there's enough healthcare there's enough enough healthcare jobs out there, either again patient facing or non patient facing that that can accommodate someone with such a passion. I love hearing that because I know that there's. Um some students who are more shy or don't want to engage with, you know, patients every day or um, want to be behind the scenes. And I think that being in healthcare is a day, is a job where you can always be fulfilling a mission, no matter what you're doing. Like you said, plumbing or, or working in the cafeteria, you're still giving back. And so I love hearing um, feedback like that. And Erickson, what do you think about what's going on with healthcare today? Um, yeah, I, I share the same things. Like there's like the reason why like I like fell into the space was again like it, it offered you like a broad like perspective like I could go, I can go to like different different avenues and like it like you can see I came from a biology path so like it, it doesn't really like kind of like lend to whatever like educational path you came into like if you're passionate about this work you could be able to make the work like very fulfilling um because I know like for me like I've been based on like trying to like help others. So like a lot of like different projects that I do is like ha has a lot of like meaningful like um, work that's being done on the back end. And even though like you you aren't able to see like the work, like you know the work is actually gonna like do. Uh, let's see, I'm I'm sorry about that. Like how to explain it, but like for me, like a lot of the stuff is like centered on like um, um, equity and like how to drive that and making increased uh, efforts towards that. So um like the with the pandemic the pandemic like happening on uh, it actually like, opened our eyes to different like things that we haven't really like touched so it gives you like um it gives you like uh, a very like, eye-opening experience like different like different like uh i'm sorry i, I can't really like i'm not really like um answering it like very like broadly but like yeah, for me it's just it's just like a lot that you can like just tap into and i'm just like kind of like um happy about like the work that i'm doing because it just allows me to like see different people and work with different like organizations even though they're like competing organizations that we bring them all into this like one space to be able to like help out the community and like being being like short for advocates for like the individuals like all uh, working up so for me i grew up in the south side of chicago so like knowing that someone's actually like putting in like time and effort um, to do like different like policies and working with like government officials to be able to um, stem the gap that we see in those areas. So things like that is why I fall in love with healthcare. That's wonderful to hear. And I know I um, get an email. I'm copying on an email every week that Erickson sends out to a number of people with some work he does with different organizations. That's just for the health collaborative and, and his department specifically are doing everything make healthcare accessible right now to people no matter where they are and making sure everyone gets um, access to get vaccines or tests or things like that. So um, thank you for the work you're doing. I, I definitely was getting, was getting what you're saying. And since you brought up Chicago, I want to go into my second part of um, the question about the pandemic. And that's just with everything that's going on, we know that there's you know a possibility that people can get burned out. And this can be in any field, like I mentioned. And so I kind of, I want to know what you all do to, um, you know, to have fun outside of work. I often have students say, well, that seems like, you know, a lot of work and being in healthcare and, you, and you're just always, you know, tired. And I, I always be telling them, no, there's, you know, there's fun things too. And I've read all of your bios. I didn't read them today because they were so big, um, but I am going to make sure that all the students who attend get to see a copy of them because I know you all do some great things and have a lot of interest and fun things and some things I was super surprised by. So I want you all to kind of tell a little bit about what you do outside of work too that kind of keeps you sane. And Erickson, since you um, already started touching on 
what you were doing. I want you to just take it from here. Um, for, for, for me, like, whatever, like, but the thing that like, really like relaxes me is like either just like sitting in my room, like and listening to music, um, kind of like really like um, allows me to like clear my mind. Um, I also like recently joined a lot of like two soccer leagues. So I'm like getting back into that flow of like being around like people and like playing the sport that I love. So it also keeps me level headed. So like every single time that I um, go back into work, I, I know that like, okay, my mind is refreshed and I'm actually like, doing things outside of work that keeps me like um like moving. So um I, I know with the pandemic you're not really like allowed to do well and that's not really given that space to be able to do too much, but like as long as it's a safe and space safe space for you to like to do a lot of things like play soccer, just walk even just like a random walking outside to be able to like clear your head is like very meaningful in, in the work space that we do. So Okay. I know you mentioned something about other sports too that you like to watch, and um, uh, and I am curious when you came to made the decision to come to to Cincinnati. Did you do that because you had a professional soccer team, or were you just or just kind of? Um, like for me, like I I outside of like moving from Nigeria, I've generally been around the Midwest and um, Ohio. As I've actually had a clean eye for Ohio for a bit, um, but I almost went to Ohio State as a coming out of like um out of high school so this this area like has like some so special hold to me and um i kind of like gravitated towards it once i came onto campus and saw how the area was um it's very different from how it is in Ohio, like illinois where it's a very flat land so so coming here and seeing all the different hills and the different um, um structures around here is pretty cool okay that's cool to know tom why don't you go next and tell us about what you like to do sure so um, I am a huge people person. And one of the things that drove me crazy during uh, COVID was a lot of those meetings stopped. Uh, believe it or not, I love meetings uh, because it's not about just ha having meetings with people. It's about getting to know people. It's, get it's about getting to know your coworker, your physicians, et cetera. Um, so I am, believe it or not, I serve on five different boards in the area. Um, uh, ranging from an uh, organization called Women Walking West, which is an organization that helps foreign-born women achieve their uh, maximum potential that have recently um, moved into the United States that are legal citizens, um, to Junior Achievement. Junior Achievement are business uh, leaders that teach in the classroom. Uh, they teach in the classroom from uh, um, uh, K through 12. Love that. Uh, I actually teach third grade, and I love it. And after one day I was teaching the classroom, I felt a little tugging on my pants, and it was a, a little boy that just, like, hugged my leg and just said, thank you so much. And uh, that just warmed, you warmed your heart, and um, it's a structured program. I, I actually am a chair of the chamber in Mason and uh, Deerfield Township. Um, so very active involved um, and just the, the fact that you're around people and I and I, well, I tell you a, a lot of some of my meetings during the middle of COVID were virtual meetings, but at least you still had the opportunity to um, interact. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect is um, being involved in fitness and, and so on is important. At my age now, I am um, constrained to walking and hiking. Um, very much enjoy that fresh air, listening to music, kind of tuning out um, the world. Sometimes I walk with my wife and we just catch up on the world. Love to do that. I do, I do that about six a week. And then the last thing is, um, I, if you all have looked at my last name, it's a little bit of an unusual last name. That is Greek. So I am very involved in my um, Greek culture, um, both not only from a church perspective, but in terms of we do festivals, we do, uh, again, with COVID, a lot of it has been uh, cooking and um, doing events to support our, our culture. So those three buckets. Awesome. How about you, Marie? Um, well, for me, I actually, well, the pandemic brought out the gardener in me. As you see some of my plants back here, um, I, I do love my plants. but. The, um, the one thing that I really love to be able to do, which unfortunately I haven't had the time to do, is actually to ride my motorcycle. That's been 
very releasing and freeing for me. But gardening has really been something that I have gotten into. I'm on a bunch of different, or rather in a bunch of different little groups. I got into Facebook and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I love learning about the organic gardening and just the different things. Those were the things that I typically did through the pandemic. Um, I tried yoga, but yoga didn't like me. So <laughs> I'm going to try it again. And um, hopefully you know, when I get into a class, which of course you couldn't do before with the pandemic, but um, now that you're able to get back in, I'm going to see maybe if I can find a yoga class that actually likes me and we can move forward from there. So, yeah, I'm not as exciting as, as Tom and Erickson, but um, I, I just have my little thing that I do like to do. No, I think that's pretty exciting. And don't you have a pit bull, too? Yes, Harley is. <laughs> she's spoiled. She's got a bed in every room of the house. Um, yeah, she's been chasing the stray cats that somehow get in the yard, but she doesn't bother the squirrels, and she doesn't bother the raccoons. I'm like, really? I'm like, the things that I don't want in the yard, get those out. But she looks <laughs> at them and walks away. But, yeah, she's, she's, she's my heart. She really helped. Um, Actually, it was, you know, because I believe wholeheartedly in pet therapy. And while I was taking care of my dad, um, he passed away earlier this year. And while I was taking care of him, she was right there by his side. And even have a couple of pictures of her where she got in the bed with him and she put her paw over his arm and put her um, head on his shoulder. And I was like, okay, yeah, she's your dog now, Dad. <laughs> That's awesome. I know that um, Cincinnati State and a couple of the other places that are here today, actually do have pet therapy programs, I believe. I know I know a couple of them do, so make sure you check out those programs too and mm -hmm. um, see if, there, if that's something you might be interested in and, or even interested in while you're just starting out. So, um, And then speaking of everyone, I want you to all know that the chat is for you to ask questions too. So if you want to um, ask any questions, please pop them into the chat. And if we have time, we will get to them. Um, I'm going to ask one last question of our panelists, and then I'll see if there's anything in the chat. If not, we'll just move on. Um, and that's just, if you could hire any of the students or work with any of the students in the audience today, what do you look for the most? What qualities um, are you most inclined to want to work with? And Marie, I'll let you, I know you just talked, but I'll let you start because I know you have um, to get off in a minute. So you can just go ahead and say. Thank yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, the Board of Nursing is calling. Um, for me, for me, it's really just being honest and, and truthful. Integrity is huge. When you think about our field, you know, the people put their trust in us at their most vulnerable times of their, of their lives. So, therefore, having somebody who is honest and, you know, has integrity, that's really just, that's the biggest thing for me. You know, we can put on airs, but when we really are just our genuine self, that's what I want people to be. Just be your genuine self. And believe me, patients can end up feeling it when you aren't. And like I said, we're at there. We're there typically as nurses with them in their most vulnerable time and where they have no control. So you really have to be somebody who wants to listen, just wants to help somebody. But again, you know, like I said, integrity is my, my biggest thing in making sure that we have somebody that actually truly wants to be there and care for individuals. You'd be surprised at just how much caring for them will actually do for you. How about you, Tom? Um, I completely agree with that. The other, the other one I would throw in there is someone that shows an initiate, initiative and somebody who's able to differentiate themselves. So um, I think we've all heard this, but you can be a top-notch student with a great, great point, but if you haven't really done anything, um, um, that does not show initiative. Um, we love to see students that um, try things, that, that uh, work at jobs, um, that volunteer. Um, I think um, the, the way to look at it is you are building a resume of your experiences and to the degree that you can show that you have a variety of experiences i think it shows um anybody a, a school and employee um a, a research opportunity that you have a drive and that you're willing to um 
um, you, you differentiate yourself from the from the pack. Eric, so what about you? What do you look for to work with or would want to work with you? I feel like um, starting in like coming into the pandemic, um, working on like large projects is just adaptability and how quickly you can be able to um, um, change along with what's the, what's going on with the work. It, it could be even with like turnover within the within your organization or within your internal internal uh, internal like uh, team. So like, how are you willing to adapt? Healthcare is always changing as well too. So like learning the intricacies of that and how do you bring forth new ideas to your team? And just also like maintaining a strong work ethic. So that's always a good thing that's been instilled with me throughout my life, just like working hard and just like putting forth more effort into the work that you do. Okay. And I did see in the chat, um, someone asked what are the names of Tom and Erickson's careers again um, and I mean I can answer that if you want um, Erickson is a population health specialist and I think sometimes that goes under other titles and names as well right Erickson is there something else like that you would call your field uh, yeah it's population health like strategies and yeah for the, for the most part that's what we do it's like a lot of strategic work that we do okay and Tom is a chief administrative officer no chief Operating officer? I, like, administrative officer. Administrative officer, okay. <laughs> um, and then I also saw a question that just said, are there any internships um, at UC for those who are under 18? I think Tom did mention at his hospital, um, Westchester is part of UC, um, there are some opportunities. Um, Westchester does have a booth today if you want to ask those people um, as well as look on their website. And then also, um, we I know that there's opportunities at all the um, hospitals in our or in our region. So if you do live in Greater Cincinnati or you're nearby or would want to come, um, we have Cincinnati Children's Hospital, which is a great world-renowned hospital. They're here today. Um, the Christ um, the Christ Hospital Christ Hospital Health Network. Um, sorry, it's a big name. <laughs> they're um, they are here today as well as well as Mercy Health, who also have a number of hospitals all over. Tri Health is here with us today, St. Elizabeth Healthcare that's in Northern Kentucky. Um, and so we do have a lot of um, our hospitals and other organizations that have internships. So if you want to tap into different groups, you can ask people about that, but also um, look online and then there will be information in the packets that are sent out to all the attendees um, after the event. So you'll get a packet that has information on every single virtual exhibitor, as well as some other places that just wanted to send information to you all that's related to healthcare. So, um, and they'll, they'll have the videos too and recordings of them today. So, let me check and see if you can saw. Um, I do see that there are several questions under the Q and A tab, which I don't have open. So, um, can someone? Pick one of those questions and just pop it really quickly into the um, into this box. One of, and then I can ask the question. One that you think is really important. Just have a minute or two. And if not, please know that we will get we will get your questions, and I can also send them out to our exhibitors. And if they maybe want to ask, um, you know, maybe just little mini videos or or even just write down what they think, I can get that information out to you. I do apologize that I um, didn't think to look at, didn't think to check if there was another tab. I only saw one chat and I just thought that's what it was. I do see one that just says, um, even with the long work hours, do you still, um, it went up really fast, have a reasonable amount of time to spend with your friends and family. I think everyone felt that way. Did anyone want to touch on that? Um, yeah, I will. I, so I think being with, uh, ha, um, taking care of yourself um, mentally is extremely important, especially during the pandemic. Um, I, my typical work is I'm probably at the hospital around 6.37 and I'm home by 5.36. Um, so those, that's a long day. However, um, once I completely detached from the house and will spend time with my, my with my if I don't have that 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 um, that's not good 
And then uh, during the weekend, same thing. Every once in a while, I'm on call. It comes up. It comes out that I'm on call maybe once a month. Um, when I'm not on call, um, I'm uh, um, pretty much detached from the hospital, except for extreme emergencies. Okay, it's a good way to do it. So just making sure you fit in that work-life balance. I want to thank both of the, all of our presenters for being here today. You all did an amazing job. I really appreciate you um, taking the time out of the schedule to, to do this. And I just can't say enough good things about this. I know that there were some students in the chat who mentioned that they didn't know anything about um, other careers besides doctors and nurses until today. So this has been really huge and has had such an impact. I can't thank you enough. Um, I will let you all get on with your day and just want to, um, and, and, and can say goodbye. So we're going to um, keep going with the rest of the event. We, um, I want you to know that we have, um, we had some slides that were going earlier. One of them was for National Health Professions Week, which started today and goes until next Thursday. And they um, mentioned their, um, they, they have a lot of events happening. And I know that Mandy is here and popped her link in the chat. And then also that was on one of the slides. So you'll see that again too. So there's a lot of things going on in the region. Um, and then we're gonna do one quick um, wheel before we go. All right, I know that the Helena in the video was going to pull one more name for the raffle. <laughs> I'm actually going to, I'm going to turn my screen off. And I am actually really excited to, there's Helena, like in real life, Helena. Welcome to Spring Health Professions Week. It's so nice to have you here live and in person. That is Super exciting. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. I can hear okay. you just fine. Um, Paulina, first of all, I just, for those that are in our audience, I want to give the video that we just watched maybe a little bit of context. And then I have some questions for you. I have some questions in the Q&A box that we're going to talk about as well. And we're going to dive right in. So. Um, Helena, this came from a really fun event that you hosted back in November of 21, and we were really excited during Health Professions Week to share that event with you. Um, so it was really fun to listen to your presenters again. Um, it's still so relevant. And so um, I want to introduce you. You, again, are a senior manager in the healthcare workforce innovation area within the Health Collaborative. So tell us a little bit about your role, the mission of the Health Collaborative, and kind of why you put on this Health Force event. Sure, thank you so much. I first want to say thank you so, so much for having me. Um, I really love getting the opportunity to talk about um, not just the health collaborative, but to talk about workforce and healthcare careers. And I think, I've, you know, this is such a great event and all the students who are watching in the chat live with us, as well as all the students who will watch later or their teachers will show them this event. Um, you're taking amazing steps by showing your interest in healthcare and by learning about it now and what you can do now to be prepared to be in this field or what um, specific profession you do. So I just want to applaud all of you and commend you for even being um, here, being in the space where you're learning about what you can do um, for your future and for the future um, of everyone, because healthcare is kind of the backbone of all other industries is how I feel about it. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about the Health Collaborative. Um, we are an organization, we're a nonprofit healthcare organization um, located in Cincinnati, Ohio. And our mission is to lead data-driven advancements that result in healthier people, better care, and lower costs. And I know that's kind of like a confusing mouthful, um, plus lots of organizations say similar things and it kind of gets a little tricky, but basically for, I like to say that our, mission is to solve complex problems collaboratively. So we get together and tackle a lot of healthcare's biggest issues and solve them. Um, I think our official, um, well, I already said our official mission is to lead data-driven improvements, but a lot of times we say, 
um, our team's dedicated to developing innovative ideas into initiatives that solve some of healthcare's toughest problems. So um, yeah, to solve complex problems collaboratively, we take things and we turn them into potential opportunities to make our region's medical community better. So we work with hospitals, we work with education centers, we work with um, schools and students and job seekers and um, every type of healthcare organization from the small physician's offices to the big hospitals. So it's really um, fun that we get to benefit the entire medical community and be neutral and in our work and, and just work on solving those complex problems to make everyone's medical and health outcomes better. Um, and so I do at the Health Collaborative Workforce Initiatives, as she mentioned, that's my um, title there and I've been in that field since I've been at the Health Collaborative and I love it but just so you know we do a few other things we do things with secure data exchange which basically means healthcare technology there's a lot more to it than that but I can't explain the the data part if I tried I've tried many times and so I don't even try anymore um, but we do a lot yes. of important things with that <laughs> if you're interested in healthcare technology I can definitely connect you to some great resources um, and then we do a lot with clinical initiatives we do a lot with regional preparedness so trauma services and disaster preparedness um, there was a video that we um, shared before about our a trauma coordinator talking about how important of a job that is to have someone who helps the hospitals and the emergency rooms organize their um, systems and work together and connect all over um, the place. And then we also do some things with like um, group purchasing and, and convening people, meaning that we get people together for meetings and for gatherings to find a common interest. So if there's a problem that one hospital is having, they can discuss this in a neutral ground and say, is anyone else having this problem? And we can discuss best practices and how we can make it better. So for workforce, that means I get to get people together and talk about projects and teams to make sure our healthcare employees in the region are happy. We wanna make sure we have enough employees. We wanna make sure we have quality employees, happy employees who stay and do good work. And so we don't want our um, employees, you know, maybe bouncing from hospital to hospital, but we really want them staying in the region. That's the important part because that kind of helps our region stay healthier. So it's not that they're um, not competing. We're not trying to um, like say that they're not, the hospitals aren't different entities, but um, by working together, then we can do some things at once that keep the employees happy and healthy all in the region so that they have choices so they can work at one system or work at the other and and that all the systems work and work together and benefit each other so um that, that's what i do i get to do a lot of fun things in yeah. day in and out yeah. at that yeah Totally. I love it. Now you, okay. So let's talk a little bit about health force then. Um, so this is a program that you organize and host for students in your area, right? So tell us a little bit about health force and what you do and its purpose. Yes, so Health Force, the entire purpose is to build the next generation of healthcare professionals by showing all of you all the amazing things in healthcare. I know that anyone, if you're like me, you first thought healthcare involved a doctor and a nurse. You know that some people have on scrubs, some people have on jackets, and that's, unless you have to go into a hospital as a young child, um, you may not know any other professions. And even those that do tend to assume everyone there is a doctor or a nurse. So what we're doing is kind of bridging that gap and letting you know the hundreds of professions that are within healthcare. And we also let you know the ones that are kind of like hot jobs that are like really um, important in our area or really needed or or will have lots of availability because there's um, a lot of retirees coming, things like that. We use um, data to kind of show what jobs are open at all the hospitals, what jobs um, have great pay depending on what you need um, or amazing pay if you really want to go for that, um, and to show um, the different aspects and avenues of those jobs. So what the panel, as you saw, they talked about all the different things they do at their systems or um, at different places and you got to see that and then afterwards they went around um, there were breakout sessions and they got to get a deeper dive into some of the jobs in our region but we even when we have the event in person we do the same thing students walk around the room they get to visit different booths and kind of pick up um, equipment and talk to people who are healthcare professionals because you can learn better from the healthcare professionals than anyone else than you can like reading a book or something like that so right. um 
yeah, that's what Health Force's main purpose is, just to kind of bridge everyone together and tell, um, show the students what the hospitals are doing in and out. Yes, I love that. And that's exactly, you, I mean, we've talked about this before that that's what Health Professions Week is here to do is to give yes. voice to all of those professions that, yeah, again, you know, eight year olds don't run around saying, I want to be a podiatrist when I grow up, or I want to be an ophthalmologist when I grow up. But that's my mission in life is to get more eight year olds to run around. And for you, <laughs> it's about getting those eight year olds to understand that, yeah, you may have to go away to get training. And then then there's an opportunity for you to come home or you may have to go from high school and do you know a little bit of training you know two year four year you know however many years of education um, but there's always a chance for you to come back into into your valley into your area and fulfill one of those needed positions so that's why I love health force I think health force is awesome and I love that you have such a local commitment to your hospital and to you know the, the people that you're serving the, the population the patients all of those things so mm -hmm. okay so helena i've got a question in the chat box from somebody who okay. is in the in the live version again this is an on demand available as well after if you have questions that you want you can get them to hpw i will get them to helena but live in the audience um and i think th this question came in during the panel so i think it's going back to discussion about experience so which do you think is valuable education or experience in the healthcare field. I'm going to let you tackle it and then we can chat about it. Okay. Well, I want to start by saying both are important, but um, I personally believe, and I also feel like um, some of the data shows that experience is even more important um, in the healthcare setting. And that's because experience actually involves education. Healthcare is one of those professions where you can still start at um, one level and work your way up to an entirely different level. That's not the truth in every single profession that's out there. Some companies you get in there and you're going to stay in that same type of position no matter what. And with healthcare, you can kind of work your way up. Some people call them career ladders or um, pipelines. Um, but a lot of hospitals will do training while you're um, an employee to help you take it from one level. You could start off um, as a volunteer um, in college or um, or in summers between college or after, you could be doing things like transporting patients, which are the people that um, push the patients from like maybe surgery to their next room or things like that. Um, and then one day end up being um, a chief administrative officer. I say that because that happened to one of the major hospital system in, in one of the major hospital systems in our region. There's a, a gentleman who that his exact story. And even our um, another hospital, we have a, um, our CEO, she also had a similar path where she started off as a tech and is now the CEO of a major hospital that has tons of locations. And, um, and, and so this can happen in healthcare. It's really exciting. And you can get your education while you're getting your experience. And you're also always learning on the job. And that's why you sometimes hear those jokes where they're like, oh, this you know, nurse knows more than this person. And it's because a lot of times the nurse may have been there for longer. And so they see a little bit more. And so they have a lot of education that they can share with people who are getting the education in college um, that you need to also um, provide good outcomes. So yeah. education is definitely important, but I think you're getting educated while you're getting that experience. And so that's why I want to say that's the, the key to it. I love it. I love it because it's absolutely the truth. Yes, a job may have a credential, like, you know, very specifically, a nurse must have an RN in order to you know, do that job. But it is the experiences that will open you up to opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunities then are those ladders that you use to advance and you can do it either, you know, through additional education or just additional experiences. So I love it. Um, I'm going to take it just this opportunity, say, if you are joining us in the live version and you want to drop a question into the question and answer box or even into the chat, I'm watching both of them while Helena's talking. So um, <laughs> don't 
forget Thank to you. do that right now um, because I, I have one more question for Helena to answer. So I'm just gonna, I'm giving you, a, this is your five minute warning if you're in our audience, okay? <laughs> um, Helena, my last question to you is, um, during Health Professions Week, we actually, you know, we kind of learn about a different health occupation every single day. And today we learned about health administrators. And so I was really excited for your panel tonight because you have a lot of very experienced um, both, you know, clinicians, you had your nurse, and then you had a lot of traders tonight. So it really dovetails well. Yes. My question to you, and we learned um, in our in our morning session today, and so if you weren't joining, if you didn't join us earlier today, um, for those of you sitting in the audience, we learned again about health administration. We learned, we heard um, from a gentleman, Dr. King, who talked about the difference between health equality and health equity. And yes. I love this question, Melina, I really want you to, to talk me through this, but tell me about the health collaborative and how you guys are contributing to health equity in your community and, and what that means to you. Sure, that's an exciting question. Um, the health collaborative is really invested in equity and making sure that um, everyone has the opportunity to have great patient outcomes no matter where they go in the region, no matter where they get care or what type of care they need, and no matter what their situation or background. So in my department, we oversee um, multiple elements to develop a skilled workforce and promote excellent jobs, but we want to make sure that those that everyone has the opportunity to have those jobs. And so that's why a program like I have with Health Force or some of the other career exploration programs I have all throughout the year, we can take kids and they can go into different um, different organizations and see the um, the what they can be, no matter where what their background is. Um, that does, you know, sometimes there's people of different backgrounds more attracted to certain careers, and that's okay too. But we want to make sure that um, everyone knows about those opportunities and and can maybe, you know, find out if they wanted what they want to do. And then it's not just um, workforce. Obviously, I said we do a number of things. Um, I will say data is a huge component, and completely drives all the work we do at the Health Collaborative. So we take the data to make sure that um, organizations are doing well by people, um, people of color, or people of different genders, or people um, who classify themselves differently, or, or and and all of those things. It's really important that everyone has an opportunity to to get excellent care no matter what your background is so we um have studies that go back decades of job openings and every year we have meetings where people get together the the work in the workforce departments or the hr departments or the diversity and equity departments at the hospitals and they look at the data together and figure out you know are we losing more people of color to different turnover in jobs because there's there's always going to be turnover in jobs in healthcare and everywhere but we want to make sure that we're not losing more people that belong to one group and if we are how can we address that? How can we make it so that everyone is close to the same and everyone is um, having opportunities to feel comfortable? Because sometimes there's reasons that um, certain groups of people will leave a job that others won't. And we wanna address those, e those reasons. And then we also, at my organization, we do an extensive community health needs assessment um, every three years. Um, some of that data gets reported to the government and some of that data, um, it's just to, live right at home and it's not like super personal data but it's data on the specific health needs of the communities we all serve and so that way we can develop meaningful responses that can be measured and so like this year we put out our most recent community health needs assessment at 10,000 residents um, from our region and they and we got this um, we took these surveys and focus yeah. groups and interviews and they just shared feedback on topics such as their behavioral health medical health education, um, all the social determinants of health, which you might have heard today during your discussion about equity, um, just, the, just the type of feedback that lets us know why beyond just your doctor, you're not getting the care you need. And that way we can do more targeted work, we can do effective work that changes the community. It's kind of like a collective impact approach. Um, where everyone's working together to make sure that the whole community is feeling heard. So, so that everyone has the same opportunities. And that means you have to listen. We call that population health in our organization. And sometimes you'll, um, 
people will confuse it with maybe public health, which is the health of um, right. taking care of you know the, the public, which we do a lot of that too. Um, but population health involves you know making sure we're listening to the hospitals to see what they say they need to give equitable care to everyone and make sure we're listening to the smaller offices that may not have like a hospital backing them up or different healthcare organizations that do different smaller things or nonprofits as well as listening first and foremost to the community that's getting care in all these places and I'm really proud of how the health collaborative listens and takes all of these things into account because you want your organization to listen to you, to um, hear what you're doing more than just telling you what to do. So I like that we're not like that and that we're trying to listen to our community and make, um, you know, they make, you know, opportunities and make, um, solve these problems together. And so um, I know that's kind of like confusing sometimes to like go over all of it, but it's, there's a lot of really good work happening at every level to address equity. I love the work that the Health Collaborative does. So again, I am, okay, so I am so thankful to you for coming and spending a little bit of time with us. Thank you for letting us to watch the Health Force panel again. It's always exciting to hear so many voices from different parts of healthcare. So I appreciate you and I appreciate the Health Collaborative for, uh, for letting us have you for a little bit tonight. So <laughs> It was fun you. to revisit Health Force. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so again, if you happen to be watching this on demand and you have a question for either HPW, the Health Collaborative, or Helena specifically, drop us an email, drop us a chat on any of our social media. We are happy to get that question to Helena and get an answer to you. Um, we'll see you for Friday the 18th. I'm trying to remember, where are we in March? <laughs> so yes. it's like March madness, but like on the healthcare level. So. <laughs> Yes. Can I give one more plug to you? I just oh. want to say, Justin, because I know that sometimes our students will say, oh, I saw one video and it made me want to do this. Because sometimes yeah. there's that one moment that turns that light bulb on in your head that makes you want to explore a career and find out if it's for you. So if you're watching today and maybe none of the careers sparked your interest and this is the only thing you've seen about it, I want you to go ahead and look at the Explore Health Careers webpage. We actually promote that webpage in two different spots on our own website, even though it's a national resource, because we want the students to know that there are resources that you can click on and find out every single job in healthcare and what you know, what are some salaries and what are um, what's the process to getting um, getting prepared for those careers. There's so much excellent information out there and a lot of it lives on your side. We're an organization that doesn't believe in like recreating the wheel. So when we were building our website and we find different pages that we add on that you know different schools need or different teachers need, we didn't need to do a lot of things because they were already done so well on your site. So thank you. And also I just wanna encourage all the students who are watching, if you are maybe shy and you like to do things on your own time, just pull up the website, just go on your phone, um, sign up for events like this, um, stay engaged, stay, um, you know, stay open to finding out new things and you'll go really far. So, yeah, because that is absolutely it is that you never know. You don't know what you don't know until it yes. literally like smacks you in the face and then yes. you go, oh my gosh, that is exactly <laughs> yeah. that career meets every single need that I have ever wanted in having a, a job and something that I'm passionate about. Love. So thank you. I appreciate that comment so much. Okay, no other questions from our audience tonight, but that doesn't mean the fun does, stops here. Again, we'll see you all tomorrow for our uh, Friday session. Thank you, Helena, and Thank I you. will talk to you all soon. All right, bye everybody. <laughs>